one one small point, and then and then I'm going to touch on a, a concept. Okay. Uh, the first small point is uh, you know just something that I see out, out in the, with with you guys pulling. I know there's some some newer pullers. Okay. Uh, I'm going to elaborate on side pressure and the cup. Okay. What is side pressure? Okay. People talk about side pressure in arm wrestling. Uh, what side pressure is to me is its internal rotation, okay? It's this, okay? All right? Going to the side, okay? Uh, that machine, if done incorrectly, okay, can train your side pressure. If you train it properly, you can train your press, okay? Uh, side pressure is at the end of any strong arm wrestling movement, right? Even if you're using your bicep hooked in, you know, at the end of all this drive, you know, comes a little bit of internal rotation. And that's fine, and that's great, and that's a huge part of arm wrestling. It's when you do it, you know, unnecessarily and with poor form that things get really dangerous, okay? Uh, you always want to stay close to your arm when you're trying to pin, okay? Uh, you want to keep your hip generally in contact with the table for all inside pulling styles, okay? When you are pulling outside, that means into a person's fingers, okay? It, it, it's got a bicep root, okay? That means most of the drive is coming from your ability to hammer curl or something like that. And it doesn't really, like I can hammer curl the same way out here as I can here. I can almost do it better here, you know what I mean? Um, so you don't really need that same connection, although you want it, okay? But as soon as I do any kind of inside pulling style, okay, I need to be close, okay? I need it. If I'm, if I'm out here trying to do any kind of, you know, internal stabilization finish, the danger for the move will go higher and higher and higher the further my elbow is away from my body and the more my elbow is open. If I try to do any kind of inside finish this way, very dangerous, very dangerous. So always stay connected for inside pulling styles. When I think of my cup, okay, what is the root of the cup? Like, you know how I said for all outside styles, the root is the bicep. For inside pulling styles, the root is the connection of your elbow to your body, right? When you think about what that looks like, you know, when you think about doing uh, like bodybuilder gym style, like, you know, rows, okay? You know, an arm wrestling connection, an arm wrestling row, you know, through your wrist, through your cup, through your connection, it is done very similarly, but inside your body, right? Like. As arm wrestlers, one of the first things that I look at when I, when I meet a guy, I'm like, let's check his flexibility, right? And he put his elbows together. A lot of like the guys who are really strong, really big dudes, they actually, they're like, how are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, the guys are all, and, and, but you know, what they're losing in flexibility, they're gaining in strength. But you know, that's something that you want. You want to be like, you know, able to tuck it right across, right? Because the more you can get tight, right, the more you're pulling to your center. What you can control out here, okay, you can control better here, you can control better here, and it's your body that you can control better than anything. So you always want to bring the match to your center, bring the match to your body, right? So your cup's root, okay, is to bring the match inside your body, okay? You always want to bring the match close to you. That is the goal of the hook. That is the goal of bending your wrist in like this, to make you get close, bring it close to you. Okay? The pin is secondary. The more you can forget about the pin in arm wrestling, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll tell a story. Okay? The first time I pulled John Brzezink, who you, many of you guys know. Yeah? John Brzezink, probably the most legendary arm wrestling that there has been. Uh, fabulous technician. Uh, fabulous arm wrestler. Uh, 2004, uh, I arm wrestled him. And I walked away from the match you know, learning a lot of things, just by, you know, you, I think the competition is always going to be your best teacher. Uh, so, when I pulled him, the first match, you know, the teacher was, Devin, you're not very strong, you know, and I knew I just had to get a lot stronger, because it looked something like this, you know. <laughs> but the next match, uh, in 2004, he was like, I think he kind of let the hook settle, okay? So we went into the hook, and we had a good match. I don't know, some of you might have seen it. Good match. Lasted, you know, almost a minute. Um, and what I did in that match, what John did right and what I did wrong. What I did wrong is 
I saw the pin line. Okay? What John did right is he focused on extension and hand control. Okay? The quicker you can forget about the pin line in arm wrestling, the better a technician you will be. The pin in arm wrestling happens all by itself. You do everything else right, the pin happens. Um, you connect, you extend, and you have good angles. And, and every, everything is easy. Every, everything just happens. Um, I forgot the other thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, talked about the cup route. Uh, yes, okay. Um, all right. So does anybody have any questions about that? So side kicker will not train side kicker right. that much? Right, exactly. So now, when I started arm wrestling, Okay, and I viewed the sport, like I thought about arm, arm wrestling is different very much now than it was when I was coming up. When I was coming up, it was a time before the internet. And uh, the knowledge that's out there now, I mean, is a lot different. You have tons of videos, everything. When I came up, I, I really didn't have a lot. And the way I viewed arm wrestling was, okay, what's happening? You're starting in the middle here and we're going to the side. Okay? So, and, and so I focused a lot on side pressure. I think a lot of guys did. Like, I think when you look at like the bulk, like the ma majority of the sport now, as opposed to like 25, 30 years ago, 25, 30 years ago, you saw a lot of machines like that. You know, you saw a lot of like the great arm wrestlers training side pressure. Like, I bought a table, a uh, training table off uh, a former Canadian champion called Leanne Dufresne, um, and looks a lot like a table like this. Okay and has a pulley system here, okay? It's because she was training this. And most people were, and many people still are. Um, side pressure lead, okay? The problem is with side pressure is that the, uh, the part that will fail, okay, is not everybody can benefit potentially, especially at the beginning, from a little bit of side pressure training. But I, I would not even tell a new guy to do it. I wouldn't. Um, side pressure is coming from the muscles in your body, but it transfers. Okay, it transfers through this bone and through the ligaments of your elbow. Then it travels up this bone and it ends up in your hand. Okay, and then the other person can feel it. But the limiting factor is never the muscles in your body. Never is. Okay, it's always, for most people, okay, I mean, amateurs may break their bone, but what's gonna happen is like, you know, three or four year arm wrestlers, guys who've been pulling a while, like strong enough to not break their bone, um, but you know, strong enough to get some good force going, uh, they're gonna blow their ligaments, okay? They're gonna blow the connective tissue in their elbows. I've done it, many times, okay? <laughs> happens, happens, happens to all arm wrestlers who are hardcore. If you're a hardcore arm wrestler, you're gonna have you will, at some point in your career, have elbow issues, okay? Um, and, you know, a big part of the sport is, is managing that, okay? Uh, but, so what I'm trying to say is, is by training it, you're training false mechanics, okay? Because side pressure happens at the end of the movement, okay? So that means you start off either pulling up or connecting, right, inside or outside, Okay, and at the end of the movement, after I'm like tapped out from what I can do muscularly, I can add a little bit of bone and connective tissue. Okay, and the same thing, if I'm coming in, I'm cupping down and I'm connecting as hard as I can, and at the end of the movement, I can add a little bit. And that way, it's proper mechanics. Okay, so I don't need to train my side pressure. I just train my fundamentals, and I can add it at the end as I choose. You know, and plus, whenever you arm wrestle, you're using a ton of it whether you want to or not, okay? Every time we're on the table, okay, you're getting stability that way, and it's more than enough. It's more than enough. If you start to focus on it, like I have many times throughout my career, every two or three years, I'm like, oh, Devin, maybe you're wrong about that side pressure thing. <laughs> maybe you need to train it again. And I'll hit it for a while, and I'll do it for, you know, a couple weeks, and then I hurt my elbow. Happens every time. And I'll probably be due in about two years or three, and I'll do it again, I'll hurt my elbow. Um, so I'll tell you, don't do it. Don't do it. And I'm going to tell you what to do and substitute for it, okay? Uh, so many things feel like side pressure, right? Whenever I have too much for you, whenever you have too much for your opponent, they're going to be like, oh, he was going to the side. He might not have been. 
you just got overwhelmed and you had to throw in your own side pressure so you thought he was matching you. Um, the supination of the hand, <coughs> supination, right? It's a good way to force, you know, to aid in forcing the hook, which we'll get into later. Uh, but this motion I have found most beneficial in healing my side pressure, healing my elbow, right? Because you will get, you will get lots of injuries, okay, as time goes on, you know, if you're, if you're retired like I am, um, right? But a great healer is supination training, right? So this, okay, just the ability to see your palm, okay? 